And uh, we were just talking about it a little bit, Alex. I, I I really like all four. Maybe Dortmund against Atletico, actually. Maybe I find that one the most fun. But obviously, Real Madrid against City will be super fun. I, I look forward to all four of them. I really mean that. As a neutral spectator, I look forward to all four. I actually didn't take a look at the uh, Europa League drawings and Conference League drawings. So I want to take a quick look at those. As we hop into our main event of the evening, we'll do some intros. Where are those ones? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. can find it. Too many ads on this website. It's okay. Maybe somebody can post them for me in the chat. That would be awesome. So I can just discuss it with you guys. Not a best of one. It's a best of five. The winner gets $150. The loser gets $50. Main event of the Basilisk Big Rain Belts, number 53. I think it's been an absolutely awesome night of games. Especially that ZVZ between Spacey Macy and Mixu. I think it was 10 out of 10. Uh, let's hope we have a few great PVTs to wrap it all up. Let's get it on. Round 1. Fight. In the bottom left side of Solaris, we are looking at the main base of the man who is uh, representing Navi, that uh, legendary Ukrainian esports orc. This is Spirit, of course, our Polish Terran player. And in the top right side, a man who is also representing a legendary orc. That orc is Team Liquid. This is a man who has been living in the Netherlands for quite some time now. It's Killus. I saw that VIP. Uh, they did amazing though. They put up such a good fight. Thank you, Alex, for posting those. Let me just go over that quickly. That's the beginning of PVT. Nothing weird is happening. No proxies. I'm not missing anything. We'll keep an eye on the opening build orders. Liverpool, at La Atalanta. That's pretty fun. Benfica, Marseille. That's fun. Oh, Milan, Roma. That's awesome. I love that. And Leverkusen, West Ham. That's a banger, too. Conference League. I don't care much about Victoria Pilsen against Fiorentina. Even though it's Reiner's team, but I don't care much. Olympiacos, Feyenoordje, not that exciting. Aston Villa, Lille, that's pretty cool. And Brugge versus Paul. All right. I think the Europa League drawings look very fun. Conference leagues also. Somehow I forgot for a sec what team Nikita was on. Representing your old boys in blue, mate. How are we doing, Mark? Hopefully all is good on this Friday. I'm looking for our looking forward to our Urza bro. I think Bruno wants to see the Uturmo versus Roddy. I told him I can do better than Nina. <laughs> but not right now, I'm not ready. I need time. <laughs> Chat like the AF? Me too. I have legit had the weirdest sleep schedule throughout the week. And yesterday night I had one of the worst nights of sleep that I've ever had in my own home. Just I was awake from like 2 a.m. till 6 a.m. I had to play Padel at 9, it was horrible. Still recovering from my big America trip as the first adept has made it to the other side of the map and is going to get the kill on the uh, SCV that's building this command center on the low ground. So Skittles off to a good start here. The reason I went for this series, guys, because in the past I very often let Skillers play against the likes of like Raynor and Clem. And I thought it would be nice to also give him a series once where it's very even. I think it's pretty close to 50-50. I don't know what you guys are voting for. You guys are voting for Spirit? Okay. I think if anything, if I have to pick one favorite, I think I would pick Skillers as a minor favorite. Not an overwhelming favorite, but a minor favorite. Spirit is opening up with Hellions into uh, Widow Mines. Will there be an Armory too? I would favor Skillers, yeah, a tiny bit. Don't screw my points, Roddy. I'm sorry, mate. Just giving my opinion. Let's just pretend somebody redeemed channel points. Roddy gave me a serious prediction about this match. But obviously it's close, right? Spirit can beat Skillers, Skillers can beat Spirit. Just like everything is supposed to be close in the BBB. Skillers is also the one who reached out to us. He said, Roddy, can I play in the BBB? I actually feel like I'm very good right now. I've practiced a lot. I said, sure, mate. Never a bad moment to have Skillers. <laughs> All in on Skillers. Now, <laughs> okay, geez, you guys really put a lot of value to my... Or your thermals words. All of a sudden, 400,000 points were wages on Skillers. 
Spirit leaves one Widow Mine on the low ground. He's going to send the other Widow Mines deep into the main. The shield battery kind of works against you here. You need to pull the probes. Widow Mine shot is good. That's five. And the other one is going to actually focus. It's gonna, oh my goodness. And the one in the natural got a big shot off too. This one killed six. One in the main killed five. Now the two Hellions show up. So that's 15 probes in total. Where Skillers had a good start, guys. With his adept slowing down this orbital, he loses 15 probes. Never trust the Dutch. You can't trust Roddy, you can't trust your thermal, apparently. <laughs> and that's a rough start to the night, guys. That's a very rough start to the night for Skillers. I wouldn't say it's like game ending damage, but being down eight workers in a five minute game, yeah, that's not gonna spark a lot of joy. No other way to put it. Trust Reddit over the biased Dutch. I mean, it's the moral of this story. Don't think there is too much that the seven stalkers can get done because we have a bunker, we have double tank. I love the tank positioning. What is this? Is this a raven? It is a raven. That shield battery is a bit too far away, by the way, so these probes actually won't get healed up. So this raven has some potential to. Uh, annoying side of the series for Skillers. And that is perhaps an understatement. I think Spirit has come a long way as well and when it comes to just closing out games. Like the days that Skillers would or that Spirit would get a good start and then he would just slow the game down forever. Those are kinda gone. I feel like he is a lot more deadly these days. And he will be able to end it if he feels like he can. How long has Spirit been in Navi? I think that's been a thing for like three, four months now. I believe a little bit before uh, I am Katowice he joined. Probably somewhere in January or December. And a lot of big esports orgs are very interested in StarCraft players right now. Which has obviously everything to do with the esports World Cup. There are a few more big ones very interested in signing StarCraft 2 players at the moment. Will it actually happen? That I don't know. But I know that some very exciting stuff is in the works. They've been trying to get our boys as well, but no one is going to get our boys. Saro and Raynor are happy with Basilisk, and that makes me very happy. Pretty cool to be on the same team as Saro and Raynor, you know. And Trigger, of course. I don't know what Skillers is doing here with the, with the sentries. The stalk is here to buy some time. That obviously makes sense. The sentries being here makes absolutely no sense, so he's going to send them back immediately. We can drop a force field and buy time. At least one Colossus gets out. Spirit is not going to walk up that ramp in a silly way. Third command center close to finishing up. Skillers has retaken the worker lead. It's got a good observer here, by the way, giving him some info. This is where life becomes hard if you took economic damage early. Because you kind of feel like you need almost every single unit at your third. Then obviously there is the potential of the double drop. Colossus shots are excellent though. Skillers is going to blink forward. How is this fight going to pan out? One tank, very low on HP, shield battery, overcharge for the wind baby. That Colossus can just stand there and battle the tank. So all three tanks fall. Now can we deal with the double drop? The Skillers is a bit out of position, does not have energy to recall. Spirit is going to send his units in deep. Oh, there are Widow Mines. You can't really pull the probes against Widow Mines. Not that bad of a shot. Could have been a lot worse. I would say good defense so far. Yeah, I like it. Widow Mine still firing. The final few Marauders are a bit harder to kill. I think that, uh, what is this? Auditor. It's Auditor is really putting a number on the economy as a few more probes died basically across all three bases. Uh, I thought Skillers did well there, guys, for a brief moment, but maybe Spirit just had a little too much, right? If you take so much damage early on, if this is how the income advantage graph looks, this right here makes the difference, and that makes it almost impossible to then be safe and sound across three different bases. Hmm. Starcraft 2, way more good than Stormgate. I mean, that's European, mate. I think people should play and be excited over whatever the hell they want. I don't really think that RTSs should compete with each other in like a negative way. Our genre is not the biggest. If people love Stormgate, that's awesome. If you still love StarCraft 2, I think that's awesome too. No need to downplay. 
I'm gonna talk crap about what other people love. Great win on my shot there. Gets the double kill on the Stalkers. Gets the probes with it as well. What a way to close out game one for Spirit. That win of mine was so good, so we should take another look at it. That was a bit of a petite Drogo Stalker warp in moment there. I hope Drogo's not here. Oh, what a shot, guys. What a shot. <laughs> That's value. That is value. And the Polish Terran takes the 1 0 lead in the main event. Hard to be as good as the best thing ever. Yeah. I, I would actually agree with that. Like, I, I've said many times that I love Warcraft 3. And that's obviously the game that got me into esports, got me into this genre and career. Well, I played some Common and Conquer, but Warcraft 3 really is what made me love RTS more than every other game. I think Starcraft 2 is even better than Warcraft 3. So making a game, even if the year is 2024, that's better than StarCraft 2 is really freaking hard. It's fun to watch, it's fun to play, it's fun to play seriously, it's fun to play casually. But hey, maybe you just need something that's a bit different. And obviously whenever things are different, it's not going to be for everyone. But that's okay. We don't need to be negative Nancys about what other people try to do or what other people like. Let people just enjoy whatever the hell they want to enjoy. <laughs> I'm chuckling because I just got a broadcast message from someone on my friend list that just said Protoss is Zimba. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to say who it is. It is a good Zerg player, but it's not the first one that you guys will think of. All right, one zero lead in the main event, round two. Round two, fight. You will always be a Terran, Mister Mark. Even if you have a gnarly random game right now, I'm willing to play your random. I will not play your Terran in the Vestal 5. I, I know that much. But I would play your random. I think your random would be fun. Bottom right side of Oceanborn, we are looking at the main base of Team Liquid Skillus. Down 0 1. Obviously knows where it went wrong. Stalker 2 is brutal. Losing 15 probes before minute 5. It's just a few too many. It's like around 8 or 9 too many. Top left side of Oceanborn, a very strong first game by him. It started off rough. You lose the SCV that's building your command center. And you're like, okay, now my build is ruined a little bit. Well, we forgot about that real quick when we saw great Wittermine connections from the beginning till the end. Navi's is spirit. If you throw more rolls there in every game, he's going to smack me. Like, uh, I am not an overconfident player, but I kind of feel like I know my strengths and weaknesses pretty well. And... Sometimes there are people that, you know, the community or viewers will think that I have no chance against. And I'm like, no, I think I can do that. But Mark Starin is too good. I, I do know that. Mark is also very smart. And the problem is that he has a lot of silly builds. But those silly builds happen to be very good against me. So no. That's not something I would enjoy. But the Zerg and the Protoss, I think I could dance with. And maybe the Terran, we can get like lucky once, but not five times in a row. That would not end well for me. <laughs> hmm. You lost 30,000 points on the resting you, on estimating your boy, Roddy, against Foxy. That was, that was a hard one to predict. I didn't really think I was going to win, but I also didn't think I was going to get smacked. I was somewhat confident, but I figured that I would need to have some things go my way. You know, you, you, even best of fives, right? Where you, a lot of people love best of fives more than best of three because you feel like, ah, in the best of five, the better player will win more often than not. Sometimes I think the skill level is that close that you can have back-to-back -back best of fives and there's a good chance that the next time I play a best of five, I lose 3-0 against the same player. There are not too many players that you feel like you're truly evenly matched with, but there is always a select group and... Yeah, one day you can 3-0 them, the next day they can 3-0 you. That's just kind of the way it goes. I, I was on fire that night. I was very proud of it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not proud very often, but I was pretty proud of that one. I felt I played good. Hmm. We are once more going to go for the Twilight Council on the side of Skillus. As Spirit is opening up with a single Hellion. What are we going to do after a single Hellion? 1-1-1 one, one, one setup, obviously. Scouting with the two adepts. Oh. One Hellion into Widow Mines, okay. Hmm. 
Skill is just trying to be a nuisance here, making it a bit harder for Spirit to start mining. He's going to lose an adept though, that's inevitable. Might even lose both, he does lose both. Great job by Spirit. The way that he split up the target fire there. That was risky because he could have gone for the guaranteed one, but he wanted to go for both and he got both. Very well done. I think these two are very competitive with each other, Sky. I would have favored Skillers a tiny bit. I still favor Skillers a tiny bit, even though he's down 0-1. If it goes down 0-2, though, then I am jumping ship. <laughs> I am leaving that Skillers bandwagon real quick, and I'm going to go for Spirit. I think these are two of the best eight, if not top 10. Like I think if you want to play it safe, you can say they're both top 10 Europe. But I honestly would have no problem with calling these two guys uh, both top 8 in Europe. With a mind drop in the natural, Skillers is going to pull the probes away. Whoa, I feel like if he would have gone for the first shot, he would have had potential. He's doing the retarget thing in the end. He has to settle for one. Reaper is being a nuisance in the back of the main. Another Widow Mine gets dropped. Much better defense this time around, though. Ah, I love that blink, too. Absolutely love that blink. Kills the Medivac, and that obviously allows him to kill the Widow Mine, too. Great defense. Much, much, much better start for Skillers in game two than he had in game one. In game 1 we lost 15 workers, in game 2 we lost 2. Where <laughs> would you rank Elazer? Right around the top 8 call off as well. And obviously I know not everybody can be top 8, but... I think Miko has been playing a lot of Zero Space. He's very good at that, I think. And he's been playing a lot of Stormgate. He's very good at that too. So I think right now not quite top 8 in Europe. But probably still top 10. I think the most obvious top 8 in Europe is that you have the big 4, Clem, Rainer, Cerro, Max Packs. Then obviously Showtime and Gabe are very good, Lambo is very good, then you have 7 already. And then it's like Skillless, Spirit, Elazer. I think that's kind of like a very solid top 10. And it's very close between like rank, rank 5 to 10, or maybe even 6 to 10. The best Polish pr uh, player right now is Spirit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously Elaser, if he's in shape, he can always take the title away, but... I think at the moment, Spirit is probably a tiny bit better. Hmm. What about the Asian pros? There are many. Five probes going down there, by the way, to a couple of other turrets. Are they still better than EU? They are not better than the big four, but they can hang with them. Yeah. It, it's very hard because we don't get to see too many games with zero ping, and ping does really matter. Some players will just perform better at offline events than online events. So. Of course, someone like Maru always uh, deserves to be mentioned. I think Dark is amazing, Hero is amazing, and you have a whole bunch of other Koreans that are good. Are you in the Firefly hype train? If hype train you means rating him realistically and seriously, as in he's a good Protoss, but he's not quite the best yet, yes. If you mean I think he's as good as Hero and Max Pax, no, absolutely not. And it's honestly kind of silly if you do. But he has potential. Hmm. Only Saro right now and Rainer at his best could really hang with the best Koreans at top tournaments, no. That is Omega Falls. Clem literally dominated in Atlanta. Clem was pretty good in Game is 8. Clem was pretty good in Katowice too. So, to say that is just uh, super in in uh, inaccurate and incorrect. Clem also dominated everybody in the WTL Code S. Or, uh, yeah, playoffs. Alright, we have three potential things happening over here. So, it's worth keeping an eye on this. These stalkers need to make sure they don't run headfirst through this army. This is where life becomes very difficult as a Protoss. A lot of lesser Protoss players will fall apart. Skillers thinks that this is the moment to run on top of all of these tanks. I don't think it is. Double kill on the Colossus. No, single kill. Oh, 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 Nikita May. That was not the fight at all. Very ugly engagement on the side of Skillers as he's now running Stalkers through that Stim bio as well. Did not manage to clean this army up. And a game where he really had a great early mid game. Now just looking incredibly rough. Great tank spot by Spirit. 
And obviously after killing the Colossus already, he now knows that it's kind of okay to drop a couple of units in the natural. Skillless is getting completely overrun, guys. Our man from Team Liquid is in all sorts of trouble. His stalkers are dying left and right. He's gonna warp in five stalkers and send a couple zealots over, but the pylon gets picked off, so stalker warping gets denied. Spirit is dominating. Great pickup here as well. He's gonna unload all the units on the low ground. Stalkers will blink, battery overcharge gets activated, but oh 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 skillers, we are in trouble. 75 SCVs, guys, behind this. Skillers is getting bobbed. I'm honestly kind of shocked by this. I am uh, honestly pretty shocked. Would not have been my prediction coming into this series. Spirit, in the end, is happy with what he accomplished and he's going to send the units home. He still has these three tanks as well. So he lost like a single tank. We lost one tank. This was just uh, this was a bad fight right here. It was a bad, bad fight. Piotr has been an absolute animal. He's been great in the big brain bouts as well. That is worth mentioning. Because I know between him and Hero Marine, obviously it's very 50-50, right? Sometimes Spirit wins all the time, then Hero Marines wins all the time. Just when it started to go a little more Hero Marines way, I let them play a TVT main event not too long ago. Uh, because the boys, like the boys being Lambo and Reina, they all said, you should ask Spirit. Spirit against Gabe is always a banger. Even if we don't love TVT, we love watching Spirit Gabe. I was like, all right, we'll do that. And I think Spirit won 3-0 and he won it convincingly too. And he often slides into those ruddy DMs asking for some BBB appearances. Single best of five, $150 for the winner. It's obviously a great thing for these nerds. They will play these games regardless, so why not put on a bit of a show and get some prize money? He's playing really good. Skill is just uh, kind of getting overran. Out multitasked, out micro. Not even that he's getting like particularly unlucky. Yeah, Spirit is just playing better so far. Now these are going to be permanently cloaked widow mines, so we need an observer. We don't. Oh, Ooh, great split up there. I'm still, is this one revealed? No, nope, not revealed. Four bay spirit. Skillers is trying to stabilize on four bases, but definitely not there yet. Luckily, I'm not trusting Ruddy. Yeah, I was I was Omega wrong so far. I mean, I did not think it was a bad prediction, but... <laughs> Spirits is an animal. This Widow Mine, I think, is going to fire maybe one more time. It doesn't get much. Oh, nice storm by Nikita, though. Love that storm from the high ground. It's going to soften up a lot of these Marauders, but he does end up losing the High Templar in the end, and now he's losing even more probes. It's a 12-minute game. The Stalkers are going to blink for a great storm on the bio there, too. One of the Medivex gets picked off. At least Skillet is going to keep the natural safe for now, but at what cost? He's killed zero SCVs, guys. Zero SCVs in a 12-minute game, and he's lost close to 40 workers. This is painful. It is very, very painful. The fusion core is going to finish up. Interesting spot, by the way, for a fusion core right in front of the planetary. Gonna try to drop one more storm. That is a decent storm. He's gonna kill a couple of marauders. This kind of feels that the floodgates are open and Spirit is just finding victory after victory. And Skillers is just stuck. He's a cornered animal. He does have a bit of vision with his observers. And he still has his spalling pylon, but... Very uncomfortable game for the man from Team Liquid. Uh, he is gonna get the Stargates and the Fleet Beacon, but... I'm afraid that this game will end before we ever see a carrier, before we ever see that mothership. With some recalls. The landed Vikings will get picked off. Spirit is going to show up in an army over here as well. Lends a couple of EMPs. Nexus a recall is going to be a thing. How big is this army? It's pretty big, but the Colossus are exposed. They get picked off immediately. And just like that, it's Spirit who takes a convincing 2-0 lead. This is a very sexy uh, TVP series coming out of Spirit so far. Almost too good, guys. Where's my excitement? Did we really have all the hype in our first two series of the night? Aye, aye, aye. <coughs> Thank you to Lothan for the 10 months and Dohi for the 19. Come on, Skillers. Don't tell me that we had such a sick start to the big brain bouts. Two series going to distance. 
that ZVZ was amazing. One of the best series I think we've ever had in the Basilisk Big Brain Bouts. Are we back in schedule? Yeah, we, th we basically have 20 minutes to wrap up this game. It's not over yet though, guys. It ain't over. Still Nikita says so. I am, uh, like, that first game, I wouldn't be too worried about if I was skillless. It's like, okay, you took a lot of damage, you know that TVP is a deadly matchup, and if you lose 15 probes at minute 5, it becomes very difficult. Second game, though, we had a better start. We only lost two probes. We killed the Medevac. We killed the two Widow Mines. It's like, how does a game like that play out like that? The engagement at that uh, 3 o'clock base above the natural was obviously a painful one. Spirit managed to siege up all four tanks before Skillers was truly able to jump on top of that army. And that has made it a very painful fight. In the end, Skillers basically was fighting in no man's land. They couldn't even get the tanks. Painful. And let's see if we can turn things around on Hecate. Round 3. Fight! <laughs> Top right side of Hecate. We are looking at the main base of the man that's representing Navi, taking a 2 0 lead, hailing from Poland. It's a spirit. TVP is in by hello. You know, mate, you're talking to a man who has defeated a lot of Terrans. On top of that, you're also looking at a guy who has said he much rather plays against Terran than he plays against Zerg. So you can whine for skillers all you want. But if this man says, that he actually thinks he's a lot better in PvT than he is in PvC. Maybe you should just appreciate the effort that this man is putting up. Because this guy is confident in the matchup. He feels he's good in it. He likes it. He thinks it's pretty good for Protoss. Unfortunately, it's not going his way. He's down 0-2. Can he turn things around? Team Liquids is Skillis. Skillis just owned Spirit a few days ago during the ladder. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's... I don't want to say it's like nerfs or anything, right? Because Skillers is a pretty experienced player. Just, we all know that StarCraft is incredibly brutal. And you might feel good. But if you're not quite 100% sharp, but you're like at 90% and your opponent is bringing his A-game, it just becomes difficult. And Lambo is letting us know that Big Piotr doesn't try on the ladder. I'm getting a grease. You're right, mate. That's, then, then it's settled, guys. If, if M. Kenning agrees about the state of PvT, then who really cares what Skillers says? I love M. Kenning, mate, but M. Kenning is not quite on the, on the level of Skillers. I'm sorry. Spirit is just playing a very good series. He's an animal. Huh? But it's not over yet. 2-0 lead, and he's dominating, but it's not over yet. It could be our final game of the day. If it is the final game of the day, I do hope you guys had fun. We have now casted 15 games in a row. This is the 16th game. It's been another great Friday night. Big, big, big kudos to Basilisk. If you guys want to show them any love, obviously, exclamation mark Basilisk is the way to do. There's also a Basilisk Discord. If you just enter my chat and you type exclamation mark Basilisk Discord, you guys can write them there. If you want to play in the BBB yourself, you're going to have to join my Discord. Exclamation mark Discord. There's a channel for it. And you can let me know there. If you want to battle. Hmm. Lambo agrees. Villa would smash Feyenoord. Lambo's a smart guy. I would never say something that stupid. Can 4.4k participate? If I see enough games of you. And I know that you're actually 4.4k. And I can find somebody else that I know is 4.4k. We could do it once yet. Obviously, there is only one proper low MMR series that we will do every single Friday. No offense to everybody at 4.4k, but... The BBB was meant to show some love to the guys that are very good in StarCraft, but just not quite good enough to win prize money. And then, obviously, to give the pros something to look forward to in the main event. And Skillers is going to play Stargate Phoenix. Spirit is... Going maybe for a bit of a thermal special. Uh, the tank push is very deadly, by the way, against Phoenix Robo. Mm -hmm. If Skillers would play Phoenix Twilight here, I would love his spot. 
I'd be loving his life. Phoenix Robo is not impossible, but if you make one mistake, like flying into that widow mine, or you lose a Phoenix, or he's just a tiny bit too greedy, you could die here. It's gonna be a spicy final game. Great scout, by the way. Scouting the tank, scouting the Viking is big. Will the Roddy Phoenix bring it back? Well, as Lambo will tell you all about, Roddy loves the Phoenixes and the Zealots. He's gonna fly into that mine. He is gonna fly into that mine. Oh, oh, oh. And now the Viking could show up, by the way. Or the oh my god, he's not even gonna get it, is he? It's just a nightmare. It is just a nightmare for the man from Team Liquid. Three. He's thinking about three bases. He wants three bases. Good news is that he has a quick robo bay, but he's going to have such a tough time, I think, dealing with the first push. Yeah, probe count is fine, but I, I'm not worried about the probe count. I'm not worried about minute 9 or 10 in this game. I'm worried about the next 90 seconds in this game. This move out with, as the Muslim would call it, the hero marine drop. Just eight marines in a single medevac. Oh, did he just lose a phoenix too? Okay. This might just turn into one of these best of fives guys that Skillers wants to forever erase from his memory. Uh, he loses the second Phoenix. He's going to take a beating against eight Marines in his main. It's a nightmare. Oh, that's unlucky. We had such a fun start to the night, guys. He's going to go for the recall. Even, what do you, you don't even win that fight. You don't win that fight with two Stalkers and an Adept against eight Marines and a Medivac. You don't win that. Can't mine from the main. He's going to warp in two more stalkers. He's going to bring over the immortal. That obviously makes this army relatively weak. The doors are open. Tank's going to siege up. Widowmine is going to burrow. Spirit is macroing non-stop behind this. That forward battery that was supposed to maybe give Skillers a great overcharge is also going to get picked up. I think this medevac can now sync up with the main push. It's a beautiful game by Spirit. It's been a beautiful series by Spirit. And Skillers knows that he's got some work to do for the upcoming PVTs because he felt confident in the matchup. He felt great. He thought he was in great shape. This wasn't it. Can this Protoss army clean up all these Marines, these Vikings and these three tanks? Maybe, sort of, not quite. Well, that Immortal's pushing, putting in some work. Gets two out of three tanks, but another tank is going to show up. One landed Viking survived. Five Marines survived. Colossus died. A few Stalkers without Blink will get that low HP tank, but I don't think they're going to get that second tank. They do. But only one Stalker lives to tell the tale now. Another turret gets rubbed. Domination. Just domination. No other way to put it. It still looks very close in the numbers, but Skillers is going to lose a lot of probes here. It's kind of inevitable. And whenever you play this style, you're not meant to take this much damage. He doesn't have a mobile army. Don't forget, we have no Blink. No Forge upgrades, no Zealot charge. Kind of feels that this was complete. D -d 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 There's no other way to put it. A massacre, a masterclass by Spirit. Impressive. Very, very impressive. Skillers doesn't really love the PVCs, but he loves PVT. Just uh, had very little to say. Spirit is now closing it out in stars. He's going to pick up a tank and drop it forward on top of the Protoss army. Now Marines without Stim and Combat Shield are killing a Colossus. Yes, I said that correctly, guys. Marines without Stim and Combat Shield kill the Colossus. And are we really going to go for the double kill on two Colossus? Now it feels like we're getting a bit carried away. Spirit doing that once is already illegal. You get arrested for that in some countries around this uh, beautiful planet. Trying to get two Colossi with just the most basic Marines ever. That's maybe pushing it a tiny bit. But who really cares? The man was floating some money. He's up to three bases. Supply still somewhat close. Game does not feel close to me at all. Skillers has no map vision. Has no detection. Does not have a mobile army. Well, he's got a couple Zealots with charge. I guess that's one thing that he can do. Not sure if we need to go there, the Kitten Jedi. Thank you to my man uh, Ramanoid for the 29 months. I still had a great Friday, guys. I think that uh, ZVZ we had between Mixu and Spacey Macy, just so fun, so exciting. So much action that that will always make up for uh, the last two best of fives. It's not that they were like really bad. I still enjoyed the PvP between Shameless and Art quite a bit. 
This one is just uh, impressive by spirit. That's all we can really say. Impressive. Skillers is gonna try with Colossus that do not have thermal lens, guys. So we're going up to three Colossi without thermal lens against tanks, auto turrets, marines, and marauders with stim. Now, first few ghosts are on the May too. Skillers is working with Penny, so he can't go for big zealot run buys, but he can go for two zealot run buys. Marines and Marauders stimming into the third. Nikita is doing his best. He's sweeping leaves on a windy day. It's just not a fair fight. What do you do? If you're a Protoss in this scenario, what do you do? Try to have the best defense ever and indeed go for the tiniest of tiny run buys to make sure you have enough units at home and hope that you can somehow, some way, find a place of comfort. He still does not have thermal lens, by the way, guys. This is semi over. I feel like it's been over for a while, but <laughs> kudos to Skillers for at least trying, right? He didn't just step out. Like, what is this? To quote Lambo, this? I don't know what this is. Two Colossus without extended thermal lens and a Zealot. As we're gonna drop an EMP, shield battery overcharge is great, but it's not great enough to save that Colossus. Not great enough to save uh, the Archon either. The Archon obviously cannot get healed up until they are done. Units need to finish up before they can start getting healed. This is a... Uh, I don't think I've ever seen this many Colossi being built in a single game without extended turbulence. We've got three. We're building a fourth. We've lost three. That's seven Colossus, guys. Seven. Without extended turbulence. One might say... Do you think he forgot it, Roddy? Yes, I think he forgot it. Does get the tank. I'm even firing up Storm now, by the way. Thank you to Hype Time. Is this game stabilizing? No, I do really do not think it is. Spirit is a four base Terran. He has plus two on the way. He has double starport, so you can crank out four Vikings at a time. Spirit has a hammerlock. Is that a thing on this game? And a rear naked choke on this game. He's got something. But okay. Obviously the longer it goes on. And the more that Skillers get some tools that he can use. Like Storm. More gateways for Zealot run buys. A tiny chance. But this is like 99% over in favor of Spirit. Especially because the Colossus do not have their very important upgrade. Protoss does have some great tools. Some would even say they're better tools, right? Skillers needs to keep the fourth base alive, then he's fine. You are uh, a little bit on copium, my friend. Just because you have four bases, that doesn't make you fine. He has no armor upgrades. He's got no extended thermal lens. He has no answer at all for all these Vikings. Like, what do we have? Five stalkers. We're gonna need to land 17 magical storms in a row. I wanna believe, mate. I want you to be right. That's a good overcharge, by the way, though. I still have tiny zealots run by. Look at that. Three zealots getting on top of a tank. Three zealots getting on top of SCVs. Now oh, we're kind of cooking. Overcharge is great. I don't think these zealots are going to win the fight, though, against the ghosts and the Vikings. I think at this point, Spirit probably is getting a little bit annoyed. Where it's like, come on, mate. You're dead. Can we just go ahead and end this? If he had extended turbulence right now, I'd kind of believe, but... Without extended thermal lens, I just feel like his Colossus are so useless. They are forced to run so far forward as the first one dies. The second one is going to get picked off as well. A couple of big EMPs have landed and Skillers have dropped 60 supply at a very rapid pace. The Zealots, they just melt without any armor upgrades. All Colossus die. The Archons die. You look at these supplies of Spirit and he's 181. Skillers is down to double digits. A few more High Templars show up. Yeah. <laughs> Guys. Oh no. Really? Now? We may as well cancel it at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like now we should cancel it and just go all out storm. And pray that we can uh, storm this army into oblivion. The Vikings will land. This best of five belongs to Spirit. Back to back clean sweeps in the Basilisk big brain bouts.
No other way to put it. A really strong series by Spirit. Had a great start in game one with those widow mines. The game two felt that that was going to be the most difficult one, right? Where he didn't have too many things going for himself. But he just kind of rolled a couple tanks to the other side of the map, sieged them up. Skill saw it a little bit too late, took a bad fight. And it became a very uncomfortable game from that point on forwards. In game three, I think Spirit had a really good scout. Obviously knew it was Stargate, knew it was Phoenix. Said, all right, we're going for tanks, we're going for Vikings. This is how I'm going to play it out then. He got himself in an Omega fine position. Is this the record of games won in a row in BBB? That is a good question that I really have no idea, but yeah, back to back three zeros is very impressive for uh, our man's spirit. We'll settle that prediction. Safe to say that Roddy was wrong, but I wasn't the wrong alone, guys. You told me I was wrong too. Ah, uh, a mega cool start to the night into two three zeros. Tiny frowny face for that. 58% of you guys believed that uh, Spirit was going to win this series. And he uh, he did. He didn't just win it. He dominated. Impressive. Kudos to Spirit. As Killers will know that he needs to go back to the drawing board for those Europe regionals. Maybe the Stars War qualifier as well. As, uh, this wasn't quite it. Great performance by the man from Poland. Questionable one from our newly Dutch man. He's obviously Russian, but we have embraced him with open arms in the Netherlands. That's all I got for today, guys. That ZVZ, honestly, was so hype that I kind of feel like it took everything out of me. Uh, the other two series, unfortunately, 3-0, 3-0, but it's okay. I still had a great night. Shout out to Basilisk for letting me run another edition of the Basilisk Big Brain Bouts. If you guys want to show them some love, you can always do that on their Twitter. You can tweet at them. You can also join their Discord, exclamation mark Basilisk Discord. As we get 10 more subbies from the greatest orc that I ever have been a part of. And I haven't been part of too many orcs, but at least a couple. And a couple big ones. But nobody has ever been as good to me as Basilis has been. Thank you to Jetag Bro for the four buckies. Uh, Thanks for stream less than three. Thank you, mate. That's all I got, guys. I'm going to go ahead and have some food. No McDonald's, no spicy McChickens. Uh, Vicky is going to make some snacks. We're going to enjoy them together and then relax. Tomorrow, I will find a time to play a couple of video games for you guys. But I don't totally know uh, when. And when I say play video games, I obviously mean StarCraft. I will also do a race on my second channel. If you guys want to follow the second channel, if you guys like watching F1... Ex no, that's not it. Exclamation mark second. And that's the channel that I'll be playing some F1 on. Uh, these were the results of tonight. But I wanted to take a look at that qualifier. So there is... I have Padel tomorrow. Yeah, I don't think I can quite do this qualifier. Oh, there's not too much to it. It's the best of five, best of five, best of seven. So yeah, this is happening tomorrow at noon. But I can't really cover that. But I think it's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll find a little window somewhere to play a couple StarCraft games and then we're going to race. And that's going to be the start of our weekend. What we're going to do in the rest of the weekend, I don't know yet. What I do know is this is all I got for today. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope it was fun, as always. I'll go ahead and send you guys over to...